All right, Kevin M has a question. He says, we often use an assumed 8% rate of return in projecting portfolio growth. We also say past performance does not indicate future results. With the stock market only being around 100 years old, how are we confident that this will be the case going forward? Yeah, here's what I, here's what I love. Pe- people think that, uh, well, it, I don't say people, that's painting with a broad brush. A lot of people, oh, 8%, that's way too aggressive. What do you guys think? And why are you using that number? What's really, really interesting is sometimes when we use 8%, it's actually pretty conservative, right? If you look at what historically the S&P 500 has done over the last 100 years, over the last 60 years, whatever metric you want to look at, it's somewhere between like, if you go back 50 years, it's somewhere like 10 to 11% annualized per year. So I think that 8% is actually not crazy. It's not outside the realm of possibility. But one of the ways that we try to ground this, is you'll notice a lot of the deliverables that we have, if you go to moneyguy.com slash resources and download them, we'll use return assumptions. Like, okay, let's start at 10% for a 20-year-old and then let's decrease that return all the way till 65. So you get to some terminal rate of like five and a half, six percent Because when it comes to modeling, when it comes to thinking about your future, we would always argue that you would much rather be conservative and things turn out better than you thought than be aggressive and things not turn out so good. Nobody wants to get to retirement and say, oh man, I was planning on filet, uh, now I'm going to have cat food hamburger patties. That's not the place that you want to live. So that's why we always err on the side of conservative return assumptions. The question for you, Brian, and I think like, I'm going to be curious what you say about this is, how can we have confidence in the future? You know, the the stock market's only 100 years old or whatever the number is. How can we feel okay that we're still going to even make money in this thing? What makes me think that the next 100 will be as good as the well, last 100? I, I think you have, to, you have to take a step back and think about the human condition as a whole. Is it, Because, yes, you're right. The, the stock market has not been around for that long. But that doesn't mean we as humans haven't been creating our own exchanges of barter or looking at value. And and what I find interesting is if you look at humankind and you think about our journey, I I immediately think of Spaceship Earth down at Disney. If you look at the, you know, the big, and go to Epcot Center and you see the big globe that that you get to ride up into and it's starting to show some age, but but still you'll you'll get the point is that you you see from, from when man came on the planet, it's like, thousands of years before we start figuring out how to write Mm -hmm. and and communicate more effectively. The printing press was a big deal. And then, so that's a big step forward. And then you fast forward and you think about combustible engines and other things. And then all of a sudden it starts accelerating. If you think about, and and like I said, the stock market is a direct, you know, dividend Mm -hmm. from this innovation and the fact that now we we because I'm young, I'm old enough I was about to say young enough but I was young I was young when it came about computers came on the planet all of us Gen Xers are very unique in the fact that we had one foot back in the old days where everything was completely analog uh-huh. where remember I tell the story I'm the reason we had bean bags in all the houses in the 70s is because I'm the remote control remote controls did not exist it was you had kids and you put them on a bean bag on the floor and then they used their big toe to to kind of turn the channels. That, you know, now TVs sit on the wall. Um, we don't even, I, nobody even watches live TV anymore. We mm-hmm. do everything through streaming. Now we have um, the internet came and changed the world. Now we have artificial intelligence. And guess what? Every one of these innovations that are accelerating, they're happening faster. So, what's going to happen over the next 10 years could have been what happened over 50 years mm-hmm. if you look at how fast things are accelerating. And this is the thing where, as long as we don't create the thing that kills us, we're going to be able to make money off of that a everything reference? we do. Oh, yeah. I mean, because we are headed in such... Um, we're, and by the way, I don't, don't know... Don't get off on a tangent. No, keep answering the question. I don't know if it's good don't for keep... humanity, but there's going to be a way to make lots of money off of it. Yeah. And, I, and I hate to be that way, but it's just the truth. So I, I think, Kevin, that I get excited about the future um, on the way that the, the law of accelerating returns and the way human the human condition wants to innovate and grow, and we're actually picking up speed on that. That and there'll be ways to profit off of it, and index funds will continue to do well through that. That I think that it gets me excited. So, um, and look, I still, 
I always tell people when you're young, it's okay to use the the higher rates of returns like the S and P 500 because it can be motivating to see how much your money can grow. But as your life evolves and you get closer to retirement, it definitely benefits you to be more conservative because mm-hmm. you're going to be have a diversified investor and you also would rather be pleasantly surprised if you do all of your scenario planning at, at a much more conservative number. And that's why we build that in into our rate of returns and our assumptions that we use. Love it. 